Let's go aces, guys. FD bubble versus Jack 10 offsuit. No! Oh, that's the right eight. That's the only eight we can see on that river. Oh my fucking god. That's huge. 7,000 years up top, we fought of 10. Holy fuck, that is massive. Oh, this guy's been so active, dude. I would love to jam this. I might go for a very aggressive jam. Yeah, we also cover him. Let's go. Come on, let's get the king. <gasps> die, he says! You fucking die! Get the fuck out of my tournament! Get the fuck away from me! Get the fuck out of my tournament, dude! See ya! What's up guys, that's the reaction that you have when you win a big pot deep in the tournament on a Sunday, 11 hours into a grind, when things are not looking that well. But yeah, sadly my file got corrupted after that, my internet died, and then I tried to record it off stream, but for some reason the file is gone. So what we're gonna do today is go into an old school hand review to see how that tournament played out. We obviously had the big stack, once again here the aces of the check 10, sick hold with the 8 on the river. And then we have here the king 10 spot. And what I don't like about this here is like, yes, he has been aggressive, but he opens into a 13 big man and 25 big man stack. I mean, that's still pretty close, honestly, but like, there's not that much in the anties. This is close, a bunch of hands that raise fold like ace dudes that probably just open jamming. Or like, at least thinking about it. So I'm just not in love with this, this is all I'm saying. I, I haven't run the exact math. It's pretty close, I would say, but yeah. Good suck out, he says, die, and my internet actually died, but I didn't in the tournament. So let's see how this plays out. So I had to fold to king 3 here, because he has 10 blinds, and king 3 is in the standard open, forehanded on the button. And then we're on the final table. We clear edited the payouts, so you can see what we're playing for. At 7,000 euros up top, this is a 50 euro turbo, obviously. And we start off with the 6 to off in the big blind, and just gonna let it go. I don't remember many hands of this final table, so um, we'll just jump through it and see what happens. But, oh, seems like, I mean, let's just go through every hand. It's not that many, it's a turbo FDV here. Three big blind jam and the ice from the small blind. We have nine it off against King Queen suited, seems reasonable. A limp pot here, big blind jam. It's gonna get two folds. Small blind is like never calling these spots. Ace three is just once again like we have him to our left and then just all these jamming stacks. This is a spot where I like to lean back a little bit and just try to get um, some ladders. The queen check is close again, but just looking at these guys, like five big blinds here, 13 there. Yes, you can open, but like it's just not great. I only have 30 big blinds, quite a vulnerable stack myself. So even though I'm kind of a big stack, being on the side of caution there is not too bad. Oh, it seems like he got caught. Let's quickly see what they jammed. Ace king, ace nine. Seems reasonable, but like, yeah, I mean, he's second shot stack. Sure, go for it. So far, I've been just pretty caught there, not doing much. 19 suited and cut off, I decided to open then. We also have some bigger stacks and just take it down. So that's nice, we see a jam and a call, ace 8 against ace 9. Pretty standard. Takes it down with a raise. D jams, we obviously got a full 10 5 suited. Let's see, ace 9 suited. Probably gonna 2.5x, yeah, or like 2.2. I mean, against the 10 big man stack, we wanna size it up a little bit to not give him a great opportunity to just, opportunity to just flat and jam it into our face. Check it off with the fold, could open again, but like, once again, borderline. The big stack in the big blind. And lots of short stacks around. He can apply a lot of pressure. At this point, I don't think I know if he wants to do that yet, but still. I love not defending the king five here. Once again, four big blind stack here, six blinds there with my stack. We don't def want to defend these marginal hands in the big blind. Over here, we would have isolated him, probably with a call, not jamming there, because if he wakes up, it would be too bad for us, but calling. But we see ace 10 versus 8 and ace 10 with the knockout. We're already down to 5 at this point, guaranteed 1600 euros, which is obviously a nice score. He gets 3 bad, takes it down. King 6 would usually a pretty standard open again, but he has 5 blinds. These guys are short, big stack and a big blind. Being on, a tight, on the tighter side once again, 6 7 suit is a very clear fold. You want to open hands with high card value and not. Blocker. So he calls for four blinds, he calls in the big blind. Oh, I think he has deuces here and that's really small now. If I remember this correctly, and he calls like ace of diamonds and doesn't get there. And he has ace three and rivers so to stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this spot because I was like, what the fuck? Come on. The three and river is so bad. I wanted to I wanted the ladder at this point. To be clear, I was on like two other final tables. Or one final table and a deep run at the same time. So, um, I'm not sure. I'm just saying this to brag, I guess. Aces with the dream spot against pocket tens and a big hole putting me up to eight and a half million. Very just just a uh, unlucky spot for him. 
Classic German running good with the cooler. 15 blind jam, we got a call. Nowhere around this one with the a7, here's the queen 9 we make a big hold again, suddenly being in a chip lead. Let's jump to the three-handed action, as you see quite quickly here on the final table. King 7 off, easy open, big blind defense. It's kind of close between betting and checking. I wouldn't mind going either way with the king of diamonds, I don't hate a bet. Blocking some of his floats, the turns the have spades, turn where we just shut down and try to give up. On the river we can think about bluffing, the thing is, I don't really love bloody bluffing here in these spots because a lot of my spade are double barreling, so I don't have that many. So I just decided to shut down here to three deuce of spades. Not sure if he calls the river there, but yeah. He raises it up pretty big now. We have 40 blinds deep, so I'm not too keen on jamming here given how short he is. So it's just decided to see a flop and hopefully I'll flop him. He bets a turn now. And this is one of these spots where I don't think he has that many king eggs. Like obviously he has ace king still, but like a hand like king 10, king jack, Loves betting the flop quite often or king queen because they have some backdoor stuff going on. So a lot of people see bet these hands and then just like bluff random shit on the turn. But the problem is, even like his random stuff has great equity against dudes, it's quite easy to be behind. So I'm just gonna fold here. If I had a three, I'd probably call the turn there though. Comes in with the three bet from the big blind. Oh, this hand is fucking insane. I love this one. So he two and a half X's, three bet from the big blind. That's just because he's opening so wide, so he wants to fold out some garbage, is my. Guess, I don't really remember the hands exactly, but like it's pretty fun. King 5, 7 board, goes check check, deuce on the turn. He comes in with a half pot bet, he calls, reverse the 9, he checks, he jams, and he tanks forever. He tanks forever, eventually makes a call with ace 9 and the other guy has king deuce. I think it's pretty reasonable to play it on both sides, I like his flop back check, check back. I don't, I hate his 3 bet, like just chant that shit in there. but like. This is your fault. This is your fault, man. Just jam it. And so we find ourselves in Heads Up playing for a 2000 euro uh, Heads Up match. He asked for the deal. I'm like, no, bitch. I'm down heaps of money on this Sunday. I need that win. So I decided to play it out. Let's see how it works out. I open the 8 9. He defends. I like C betting here. We should have the best hand mostly. Going for a little bigger sizing. We don't need that much protection with the 9 of clubs in our hand. But I uh, still want to charge for him to call. Blinds increase, we have less than 30 now, defending the 5 9 suited, pretty trivial flop call. And then we check the river and he bets again, and this is just a very underbluffed spot, so I decided to let this go. Um, very planet, yeah, dependent, if you want to call there, I think it's fine, but like, just so many people, they just give up with shit, they don't want to bluff there, so I decided to let it go. And, yeah. He raises, we defend the queen knight suited, pretty good flop. Decided to just go for it. He had a very high uh, seabed frequency, so uh, just decided to raise it and get it in. 3 5 we fold. Defend the king 7 here. And just trying to check it down. And on the river, I decided to fold because I think a lot of his bluffs are usually bluffing turn when the ace hits when he checks back flop and not the river. So I don't think our king high is too good. There. Monster flopped. Again, a seabed, again, a raise. The semi calls. Turn is the ace, and this was actually an interesting spot for me. When I thought about my check raising range on the flop, we're gonna have some king jacks in there, we're gonna have some um, 10x and 6x in there, lots of draws. But I also figured that he doesn't have that many ace x when he bet calls the flop. Obviously, ace check, ace king maybe, but like he was so wide that I think we could make a big part of that fold, so I just had to jam it. I wouldn't jam very often on the turn there, but I, like we have so many outs there. We can fold out all of his flop floats. Um, he's still gonna have like 7, 9, 8, 9 himself, king, uh, jack 9. And even if caught, we have lots of equity, so decide to rip it on the turn. Um, if you want to check jam the turn, I think it's also fine. I'll check call it to smaller sizing. Now over here, given how often I check raised him so far, I decided to check raise it with the queen 5. A uh, bit thin, obviously 30 by C, but it's totally fine to do it occasionally. But I think, especially given our dynamic, I uh, decided to be a bit wider there. Open the ES6, pretty bad flop. Decide to turn this into a river bluff on some runouts. And here in the river, we've just bet a third, represent a nine or a uh, V10. But he bets out, and I'm not gonna hero there either. So lots of folding in my end, not a lot of hero calling. Obviously, player dependent. Over here, I decide to check back the king. Hi, we got some backdoor spades. Try to check it down. He bets river again, and I decided to fold again. These are just lots of people are bluffing there, so I kind of went with that read against him. and. Looking back, I don't know, feels like you should call it a little bit more often, but when you have that instinct that you should be folding these spots, I like to go with it. 
We're jamming deuces is also pretty standard. Don't be limp d8-9, also raising is fine. Just decided to mix it up a little bit. Um, over here on the turn, it's pretty close. We could raise, we could call. Should we ever fold here? Half fold is pretty close, honestly. 24% equity. That's what we need. It's probably fine to call here, but uh, I don't hate folding. Maybe raising would be cool. Do a jam d6 here. Once again, he's been raising a lot in the small blind and he got called. He <laughs> classic German doing German things. <laughs> but I think it's a very standard jam for 24 blinds. Doesn't perform that well post. Then we trapped him with the tens. 14 blinds deep. I want to limp a lot, so we're gonna mix in some good hands. And that ace on the turn wasn't a good card. I hit a three-outer, he hits a three-outer, and we're back to even. Picked up ES King next door. Came in with the three bet and he just let it go. King we suited, also raised that one up. He pulled a pre-flop. King four, we defend. Got a call flop once. Great turn. I said you deep big here. Um, this was just purely exploitative. Don't do this shit, usually. Um, what was my reasoning for this? I had some reasoning in-game because there was something on the flop that made me want to lead there. Oh yeah, because I think his range is just going to be... He's not going to bluff the 4 very often, and he's always going to call a queen to this lead. Might check it back on the turn, like big queen x, but he will always call it in my opinion. Even a lot of 5x, all of his diamond, higher diamond draws he's going to call. So against that range it just makes sense to lead pretty much. Going to raise it up with ds9, would have called a jam obviously. Check, check on the flop, 9 is a good turn, we just try to get to the river. And then mix in a big value bet. I think he, he he's done a lot of river betting, so I think he's also betting like all of his 10x. So my strong is 9, I like betting. And we do get heroed by the king 3. Not too unreasonable. I mean, my bluffs are gonna be like a6, some king x as well. So it's not ideal to have the king, but like I'm still gonna bluff like a lot of king x on the turn here. So I really like that hero call. Just unfortunately, I have ds9, and like I shouldn't really have that many value hands here. Um, I think that's a pretty clear hero on his end, or pretty clear call. Oops, sorry. Had to give him the walk a little bit there. Bit card there, not ideal. Limping to 5 7. Should just bet here on the flop every time because we have the best hand mostly, right? All of his ace x um, are jamming, usually. We check it back on the 6. It's kind of close between barrel lane, but he still like queen 5 off and stuff. And obviously 6 4, 6 2, so I just decided to check it and try to get the showdown. Sadly, didn't win as many chips from the queen 3 as I wanted, but that's alright. Jam D is 5 for 15, taking it down. Limp pot here. Going to see that turn. That's the half pot. And this time it's a great turn. I decided not to lead it because looking at the flop sizing, this time he sized it up on the flop. And I figured he would like double barrel more. I'm not sure. It's not very consistent. But like it, you just shouldn't lead there usually. And yeah. I'm not sure. You can go either way. But like usually don't lead the turn here, checking a standard. Not on the river. Check 9 gets there, 9 6 gets there. And I was wondering, like, what are his usually value hands that he has here, right? A lot of 10x, I think, 8x that he doesn't want to double barrel, but decided to bet the flop with. He's gonna have check 9, he's gonna have some 9 6 that he doesn't double barrel and check on a turn, reasonable. He's gonna have some 7x as well, like check 7, 7 6 that he bets on the flop, maybe 7 4. So I decided to kind of target, like, a lot of these hands and just try to represent a random float with a 1.1 million bet, try to get the value from the 10. And then he just jammed it in there. And at the time, I, I thought that, yes, he's going he's gonna to have to check 9, but also, like, my sizing just, just screams, like, I have queen 10 here, and I don't, like, not really a flush and shit, so it kind of looks weak. And I, I feel like, given how the heads-up match has gone, it, it felt a bit more like a bluff. It's, like, when you're in a setup, when you're, like, playing the heads-up yourself, now looking back at it, it's, like, very different, but when you're in the zone and you're just playing and you, you think about what can your opponent has, have here and what would he really do there, I just didn't expect him to have to check 9 that often and turn like 7-6 into a bluff here, 8-6. I figured he would have enough bluffs and that's the reason I decided to call. And he turned check 6 into a bluff, blocking like some straights with the 9-6, six, 6-4 six, combos. And that was it. I also didn't expect him to have a flush because I think he would bet on a turn very often, as well as uh, not bet as large on the flop. And same comes for the check 9. I think we will usually go a bit smaller with hands like this, so I tend to unintentionally or unaware of it so decided to go for the hero call and I was correct and we take down the tournament for 7,000 euros. So this wasn't too deep into strategy or anything I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of how the tournament went. That was pretty good stuff. I also tried to recover the other final tape I made and we'll upload that soon as well. 
uh, or already it did, depending on which video will be released first. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next video. Take care.